When doing compositing, it is often useful to have a separate render pass which captures the relative object space positions of hairs, which do not change as the hair is deformed and moved along with the animation. This means that at some time each strand point gets, gets its own unique color, and this color remains the same for the duration of an animated sequence. This approach is called position reference pass or PREF pass and in this uh, quick tutorial we're going to explore how to achieve this with Ornatrix for Maya. I created a default furball here and I reduced the hair count to 1000 just uh, for demonstration purposes but uh, in your scene you would have a character with a groom applied that's probably animated or static this can be done at any point in your uh, grooming or uh, character setup stage so first thing I will do is click on top of the furball shape so I add a new operator to the top of the stack and I will add the generate strand data operator Inside this operator, I will uh, uh, set the target data as a new strand channel data, which is already the default. I will name my channel pref, or anything you like, as long as you remember what you called it here. I'll change the new strand channel type to per vertex, because we want these values to vary along the strand length. Uh, and I will set the generation method to world space position, because this is what we want to capture with our uh, pref pass. So we want to display the world space positions of each hair strand. You can also use object space positions if this is what you want, but if you have multiple hair objects inside the scene and you want each one of them to have a unique color, then a world space position is a better idea. Then I will uncheck this use target value range uh, option if you leave it checked, it's a, it is also fine. It just means that the RGB colors are going to be clamped between values of 0 and 1. If you leave it uh, unchecked, then it will have a full range of our world space position values. So it can go into negative range and it can go above 1. So next, I need to connect this to a material and to render this out in my scene. So I will open my hypershade window. And inside the hypershade, I will get this AI standard hair material, which was already assigned to the hair when I created the furball. If you're using uh, another renderer other than Arnold, uh, you will just use a different, uh, the, whichever material was assigned to the hair. Or if you assigned your own material, you can drag it in here by yourself. So uh, next, I will go to the utility shaders and uh, to the user data shader. And I will add um, a user data vector. You can also use user data color, but uh, vector is will give you uh, vector values as opposed to just RGB color values. Again, this goes back to whether you want to use the clamped uh, values between 0 and 1 or if you want to use full range of uh, uh, world space values. So this uh, user data vector inside the attribute field, I'm going to select the name that I have assigned to my uh, generate strand data output, which was pref. If you use something else, you would put uh, the other value here. And I will drag out this value, out value parameter, and connect it to emission color. So uh, now I will have this uh, material emitting the generate strand data uh, color values, which will be our world space positions. And then I will go to my standard shader and kind of turn on all the other uh, values so we don't get anything else mixing in with our uh, with the output color. So I'll just set everything to black. And um, if I render my scene at this point, you see that we just have everything black, but uh, the hair itself is there because we can see that it is uh, uh, visible in the luminance channel. It's just uh, a color black. The reason for this is that this emission uh, field here is actually set to zero at the moment. We just need to set it to a constant value of one. To do this, I'll use this uh, um, another user data node, but this time it's going to be a float value. And I'm going to set the default value of one and leave the attribute field empty. I will connect this to the emission color. And at this point, we will still have uh, the output values here as black because we need to perform one final step, which is to actually export this PRF uh, channel into the Arnold render. I will go back to my generate strand data operator. And in this operator, I also forgot to change the sample value count from one to three. This way, we're not exporting just a single value, but we're exporting three values, one for the X, another for Y, and third for Z. 
so there's going to be three consecutive scalar channels exporting the XYZ uh, world space positions in this case. Then I will go back to my furball shape here and uh, a drop down called uh, render export. In here I will create a new channel called PREF. I'll change the type to color so we're exporting a color channel instead of a single scalar one. Press the plus button and I will select and move the PREF1, PREF2 and PREF3 channels into the right field here. So these are the three channels that we will be exporting. After I press confirm you can see that we are exporting a PREF channel with these three um, generated strand data containing the world space positions. Now if I press render we can see that we get our, our three channels and they contain the, the information that we want. Finally, because this is an emission channel, and it's going to emit light onto other objects within the scene, and we don't really want that, so I'm going to select any other object. In this case, I only have uh, my sphere, and the material that I have assigned to them, so Lambert in this case, and I'm just going to, uh, to change the diffuse color to black, so that they do not participate in the render, and they kind of just absorb all of the emitted color. So what we're left with are just uh, the exported RGB values which represent the world coordinates. If I go back to my generate strand data and I turn on this uh, use target uh, value range option and I press render again, you can see that the, the values are much softer and smoother now. This is again because the values were clamped between 0 and 1 as opposed to if I don't use this, the values are much more extreme and uh, again this is up to you whether you want uh, the, the resulting image to be in vector format or just a simple RGB image. However notice now that if I go and edit my of hairs so you see how the magenta color is here at the bottom and then it kind of goes into the blue uh, and the cyan values here. If I go back and uh, edit my uh, the shape of my hair uh, let me just turn on IPR rendering here you can see that the magenta values will fade into the blue. Uh, there is always going to be this border between magenta and blue over here. And uh, this means that as the shape of the hairs is changing, the world space position values also change. And this is something we want to avoid. The whole reason for a PREF channel is that we want the position to, to be a reference. So that means that once a position value is assigned to the hairs in your uh, character's T pose or some relaxed pose, as the character moves, we always want the same position on the hair strand to retain its initial value, uh, which is very useful when you're doing compositing. So I'm going to undo these changes and go back to generate strand data operator and inside this operator I'm going to use the store values option. This will uh, take the current values and store it inside this nodes attributes which in turn will be saved with your scene and after you reload it in the future the values uh, for each strand will remain the same. In this case I'm using the same render and hair count inside the viewport uh, and so I don't need to do an extra step but if you are using different hair count inside render than viewport then at this point you need to render the scene once. I'm just going to do it uh, uh, for us. So these values are properly stored uh, with the scene at this point. I'm gonna go back to IPR. Now if I go back to my edit guides and I do some brushing Notice how these uh, magenta values are remaining with the hairs that they, it was initially with. So I if I move this hair with a brush, all of the colors that were initially on the hair uh, remain on, to on the same strands, which means that uh, th these colors are now referenced by the strands and their value will stay together with the strand as the hair is moved uh, using physics, dynamics or anything else. So again, if you're using any other renderer than Arnold, the steps would be the same, except that you would need to use that renderer's uh, own user data shader to select this PRF channel that we exported from our node. And this way you can get a quick and easy position reference pass for your compositing needs.